What's up? I'm Alex. In this quick tutorial, we're going to be building a prototype of a stock management application by using React and Strapi. So we're going to start from scratch, we're going to start from nothing, and we're going to get you to being able to visualize your stock, your products, and visualize their quantities and what happened to them. And the way we're going to do it is in a fairly smart way because we're going to be tracking the total and each product and uh, by clicking on them we're going to allow uh, to see what actually happened to it. And the way we're going to build it is going to be very scalable and very reusable because the second we add a new product such as uh, my secret we can then add a new stock event to it and we can set it and the second we're done there Boom, we have a new product that can be managed and viewed. And as you can see, we're going to have the visualization done through a React application. So this will be, this may be your first introduction to React and it's a fairly, fairly simple tutorial if you've never worked with React, as long as you're able to accept that there's a bunch of stuff that you not necessarily are familiar with. But uh, I tried my best to go as slow as I can to get you to familiarize yourself with React and if you apply this, this couple of techniques that I show you in this video then uh, you will actually be a more competent React developer so I would highly recommend uh, uh, this as a first viewing even if you have never used React and on the other end we're going to be using Strapi as our administration panel so if you want to add products or if you want to add stock events that's how we're going to be doing that so prepare Get ready to lock in. This video will really stretch you, but it will also show you how easy it is to build application through these simple tools. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install Strapi and React. So here on the left, uh, I've navigated to the folder in which I'm going to be building my project. And I'm going to type npx create dash strapi dash app. And then the name of the app, which is going to be called uh, inventory dash backend. And here on the left, I'll type something similar, which is going to be npx create react app, so the react application, called inventory frontend. Front end. There we go. I'm going to select quick start on the right for my strap application. And this way, we're going to be done with the installation. Once uh, react is done we can just cd here on the left i can just cd into inventory front end i'm literally looking at these instructions here cd inventory dash front end and then i can type npm start which is going to run the default uh, start program which basically runs uh, our application in uh, development mode at least our front end and our back end is already running thanks to uh, the fact that Strapi runs by itself. And as you can see, it automatically opened a page called localhost 137 admin slash off slash register, which allows me to register my admin users. So I'm just going to register that. I'll just call it X. And technically speaking, you can uh, use unsafe credentials here because uh, uh, as you see in my course, uh, when we deploy, uh, we deploy with a separate database. So this database is not for production. So we don't really, we're not concerned with that. And now we have, uh, uh, we're basically done with our Strapi installation. Uh, on the other end, we have our React application. And the way we're going to go through this course is, uh, the way we're going to go through building this stuff is, uh, we'll design the data first. And then given the data, we'll make it look decent in React. And then we're going to be building the Strapi side and then we're going to combine it. Okay, so we follow the idea that we do the way it looks first. So if you follow a real project, you know, professional environment, you will typically have some sort of design or some sort of basic mock-up and you build that. Then you have a definition of how the data looks. And so you build the database or you build the backend. In our case, we build the content types and then you connect the two for us to connect them right now will just make our lives more complicated so I want to avoid that that's why we're going to start with the react and this is going to be a quick uh, introductory course on react uh, that shows you how to to get it done so you, you you should require only basic JavaScript you should require no other 
requirement. So let's get going. So as I mentioned before, a component is either a function, this is a function, function app, or a class, let's say class app, that, return, that has a function called render, which, just like the function, returns something. So for you to, to literally remove this, and then uh, uh, type it here and type in I'm the app class, uh, we need to do an additional thing of importing component and uh, extending it, extends component, and since it's a class, we're going to remove the open parens. For us to do this, versus for us to uncomment this function and type in here, I'm the functional app and comment this part here, is basically equivalent. They are both components. Okay? I'm going to go deeper in this briefly, but what I want to men mention is if you have a function that returns some sort of HTML, this is HTML, it's a div with some text, and uh, uh, some other stuff, you can also return JavaScript, and the way you return JavaScript is by adding curly braces. So if you type 1 plus 1, let's say, let's literally, let's say I have 1 plus 1 inside of a paragraph, but then I type in the same thing but surrounded by curly braces, the difference that you'll see is that the second one gets evaluated. So the first one plus one is just a piece of text, while the second one plus one gets evaluated. So if I turn one plus one into two strings, as you may expect, the concatenation of two strings will return one one, return 11, right? Because we're concatenating strings, okay? So what, do, what does it mean for, for our intents and purposes? It means that if you have put something inside of curly braces, you are evaluating JavaScript. So this function app, which I called component, uh, is basically returning HTML with superpowers, which we call JSX, which is basically a combination of JavaScript and HTML. Okay? So, As you can see, the React application is already started and it has this text that says edit source after JS and save to reload. And uh, we're actually gonna do something very similar. Let's um, open up Atom. I'm gonna open my text editor, Atom. And uh, I'm gonna open with command O or by clicking on open, the folder with uh, the code only from the front end. So I'm gonna open inventory front end, okay? I'm opening inventory front end. As you can see, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, very briefly, the public folder is the stuff that we serve publicly. So static files, index.html, images, that kind of stuff you put it in the public folder. Uh, you also can add the HTML and CSS in here and it will be served in any page. Uh, then you have this stuff, package.json, package.log, readme.md. Readme is, it's a, it's a document that tells you what's up. Package.json is a tool that allows you to interact with NPM or Yarn, which are package managers, which as, you'll, uh, as you should know, allow you to install stuff. The package.lock is just uh, a artifact generated by the installation process. And then we have our real folder, which is the source. The source folder is the real folder that we deal with when we're working with React. Uh, the grayed out node modules is grayed out because it's not uh, in, uh, um, it's git ignored, it means that it's not tracked in source control because as I said, the package.json tells you uh, the packages that you need and it tells them uh, in the dependency section up here. And so if you share your package.json and then, uh, then any other user that uses npm or yarn will be able to know which node modules they need. So there's no reason to include those, which leads us to being able to actually get started with the real code which happens inside of the source folder. The source folder has a bunch of files. Uh, setup test is just to set up the tests. Service workers is for service workers which allow you to run uh, operations in, um, let's call them background operations. Uh, we're not gonna discuss this. Uh, there's a logo file which is a static asset, asset that we uh, have included in another file. Index.js is just the file that sets up our application. We're not gonna touch this. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, 
this is how you set up a React application with no uh, Redux, uh, no middlewares, uh, no routers. This is how you set up a very simple basic React application. So let's leave it at that. And uh, which leads us to the real files that we're going to be working with, which is called app.js and app.css. App.js is a file that contains a component. A component, for our intents and purposes, is either a function or something that returns a function called render, which returns some HTML with uh, superpowers, some HTML++. So I'm going to go deeper into this explanation of what a component and a class component is. And at the end of the next video, you're going to know exactly what I mean. I briefly mentioned a class component. I'm going to go back to it uh, later in this, in this video. But for now, we're just going to delete this. And uh, I'm going to just recap where we're at. I'm going to remove this line import logo. The only thing that I want you to have in your code are the following lines so that uh, we can be on the same page. Everything else is irrelevant for, for now. It's just that uh, I've preceded it in your brain so that when I teach it later, it's going to be a little simpler for you to see it because it's not going to be the first time you see it. But for now, this is all we got. Import React from React, which means that we import uh, the, the, the main uh, uh, file from uh, the React package, which basically allow us to do this because otherwise we wouldn't be allowed to do it. Then we import app.css. And as you noticed, app.css is a CSS file. So what I want you to notice is that if I delete everything and then I click on uh, uh, go back to app.js and select the name of the class app. So for let me show you what, the, what it looks like right now. It looks like nothing interesting. But then if I type in dot app in the CSS and I set, for example, the max width to 500 pixel, margin auto, padding 42 pixels to 24 pixels, then you'll see that uh, the styles get applied, which means that by doing this import statement like this, we are able to get the contents of this CSS file and we're able to automatically add it to our code. So if I was to, for example, look at this line max width 500 pixels and I go in my Chrome and I press Command Option I to open my terminal in my console and then I go in the elements tab and I press command F and command V to enter you'll see that literally the style that is contained inside of app.css is injected into the code uh, just through me using this line right here okay and we're gonna use import statements later but for now as I said what do we have we have a function that returns something and it returns a div with a class name, where class name, as you'll notice here, let's just search for the keyword app. Okay, div class app, as you've noticed, as you can see here, in the bottom left size, div class app, the, uh, we wrote our code with div class name equal app, but it gets turned to div class app. That's because the keyword class in JavaScript is a reserved keyword uh, that, that we actually used previously. So we don't want to use that, we cannot, and so we have to use this one. So when we're working with uh, React, uh, a, a few properties will have different names or they'll be typed in a slightly different way. It just takes a little getting adjusted to and it just takes a little Google searches, okay? Uh, it's nothing uh, major, but you'll notice that there's we're not really working with HTML, we're working with something that is very similar and honestly it's actually more effective than HTML. Now the reason why I'm bringing this up in the first place is because what I'm about to do in the next 40 minutes wouldn't be possible without React. It would take us at least three hours to do it with any other language or any other, uh, I would say with any other non-framework because technically you can do this with Vue or Angular, we have got to be fair. But for you to do this in jQuery wouldn't take you as fast as how long it's going to take us. Okay, so get ready because we're getting started right now. Our first goal is to define the way the data looks. And given how the data looks, we're going to uh, build a bunch of interfaces. So let's uh, figure that out. I'm going to go in app.js and I'm going to start uh, uh, writing some stuff. So, well, we're going to have two data types. Our two data types 
are going to be the product. So we're going to have product. And then we're going to have uh, stock events. That's because each product will contain the information related to what a product is. So for example, let's define const products being equal to an array, a list of products, in which every product has an ID, every product has a name, and maybe every product has a, a thumbnail. So I guess we're going to have a black box uh, PNG. Copy image address. I'm just going to copy a random, uh, as you can see. It's not going to look that nice, but uh, we can just close it. Okay. So basically, we have a product which has three properties, the property of an ID, the property of a name, and the property of a thumbnail. Okay. That's uh, all we're going to do here. And I'm going to close it, and then we're going to have stock events. The stock events is going to be a list of events that happen to the stock. So stock events is going to be equal to a, a list. But the stock events, sorry, the typo. Uh, first of all, they're all going to have an ID again. Uh, then they're going to have a type, such as uh, uh, purchase, now let's say add or remove. And then quantity. And then product okay so let's say the, the quantity is one the, uh, let's say we added a hundred let's do let's do a note in which we say type can be either add or remove and in this case it will be a add and then our product is going to be the ID of the product okay so as you know by working with uh, Strapi in our product field, we will actually get the entire product, which is cool. It saves us time. So for this uh, uh, example, I'm just going to put in products square bracket zero because that's basically what Strapi will return anyway. So we want to mirror that, uh, which means that the stock events technically contains all of our data. Although if we look um, at what, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going we're gonna to fetch all of the stock events and then we're going to uh, separate them by the different products and then we're going to display them okay so a good start would be to just show the the stock events and then separate them by product, and then lastly, display them, okay? So, since we're going to have these variables here, uh, I'm think, I think we're going uh, to go through a, a very simple data flow, and the data flow will be that the app component will uh, get this data, and it will pass it to our components that will display that data. So, we're, for now, we're just going to have one component and uh, I'm going to get into how this works in a second, but we're going to have one component that will receive these two fields, these two types of data, and it will do something with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I mean with, with having a component. Then I'm going to show you what it means to pass data to a component, and then we're going to get started with the actual building of uh, the functionality. So as I've teased before, a component is just a function or a class with a function called render that returns something. So what we can do here on line 22 is I can define a new function called example, in uppercase E, example component, component, and I can have it return some uh, paragraph that says I am the example. As you can see, I show. So what I can do next is I can take this name and I'll do something esoteric for you. I'll just put a less than sign, I'll paste in the name, then I put a space and then a slash and a greater than sign, which reminds you of how you will type the image tag or how, how you will type any inline um, element that has no, parent, no children, such as image in HTML. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save. So as I said, I defined a function with this name, example component, 
and a return statement that returns some paragraph, and then I put it here uh, by creating what you would call the opening p tag that is self-closing. So basically, I, I I created like an image tag that is self-closing, but instead of having the image text, I used the text of uh, the name of this function. Okay. So if I save and I open my React application, you'll see that this text is now here. And if I duplicate this line by selecting it and then uh, going on a new line and pasting it, and I paste it four times, you'll see that I get four times this text. So this should be for you a way to kind of glimpse at the powers that this way of coding brings. We don't have to append and select and do all of the weird stuff. We can just say that there's a new component, which is basically a function that returns a piece of HTML, and it will return a piece of HTML. So now, I mean, this is pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff already. But now, what happens if I add a new property here on line 33, and I add a property called title? And I type in literally title, just like you would type in a paragraph, you could type style equals to blah, 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 blah. I'm typing a property, or like you would type data HTML or data name equals uh, one, two, three. You could type that stuff, it's a property. So I'm typing a property to this component called title, and I'm setting it to be equal to uh, Alex. Okay? So... What, what happens if I do that? Well, let's refresh, and as you see, nothing happens. But look at this function here, example component. What if I type here props? Okay, I type here the keyword props, and this keyword props, as you'll, know, as you'll soon learn, is uh, not arbitrary. I, I use this because it's a convention, but technically speaking, you could call it anything because you can call a parameter of a function anything uh, that's just a convention, but let's just for the sake of convention do a console.log here on line 23 and I'm going to type console.log open parents open double quotes the name of the function and then the name of the variable which is props and then outside of the double quotes comma space props and this is how you make a console.log statement that doesn't confuse you by the way because now it's very clear what's going on and now I can uh, open my Google Chrome and open the console and as you'll see I see this line, example component props, that says that the title is equal to Alex. So now we see title Alex here. What if I type uh, a, a number and I use this weird uh, curly braces uh, syntax and I pass in the number four? And, I, and it refreshes automatically because React is awesome. Uh, and as you can see, we got number four here. But what if I pass a, uh, a function, let's just call it uh, the function, because curly braces alert, yo. What if I pass that? As you'll see, if I open up my props, the function is a function. And I've used this weird syntax, uh, open parents uh, space equal greater than, because it's an arrow function. And uh, if you don't know what an arrow function is, don't worry. It's literally just uh, an alternative to typing function. And additionally, you cannot bind the scope of this because the scope of this is always the, uh, already binded when you use an arrow function. Uh, so if you don't know what that means, don't worry. We're, it's not going to be relevant here. But it basically means that these functions uh, are faster and more productive in 90% of your use cases. And in 10% of your use cases, they make your life miserable. Uh, you know, and, you're not, and you have to figure out which one it is. But in this case, it doesn't matter. So all I want to say is that we use this props thing right here, this new parameter inside of our function. And in some way, by having parameters here, by having properties to what looks like a very similar syntax to an HTML element, we were able to pass those values, those key and values, to our component, to this function called example component. So... By doing that, that means that we can have our function app being responsible for getting the products under stock events and that we can pass them to a different component. So let's do that. I'm going to remove all of these properties. I'm going to type in products equals curly braces products. 
So this is the name of the property, and then this is the value of the property, okay? So just because they, they, they have the same name, that doesn't mean that they are the same thing. This is just an arbitrary name for a property that get passed here. This is basically the name of a key in the object, as you can see here, it's the name of a key, products, and then the second one, the white products, is the value of that uh, property, and it's the, the value of a variable called products. So due to that, I'm going to rename this called this function, this variable to fetched products, and I'm going to replace the name here as well, so that we avoid getting you confused. So as you can see, the products up here are called fetch products, and then fetch products here, which is again a variable value, and then on line 35 we have the products property, which is just products. Okay, so if I save. And again, we have this console log here on line 23, example component props. As you'll see, uh, products is not defined. That doesn't matter because it's defined now. Still not defined. Let me check for a second. Okay, we're talking about line 13. It crashes because line 13, uh, products is undefined. Very well, it is. We're going to rename it to fetched products. Okay? And as you can see, we refresh, and now we have our property. Okay, and we have <coughs> our data, the data we care about. Now, the second property is called stock events. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to call it fetched stock events. And I'm going to pass it as a property called stock events equals curly braces fetch stock events. And I put a space here to make it look nice. Some people, even when they get just two properties, they will go on a new line and tab it in. Uh, that's fine, it's up to you. With just two property, it doesn't matter, but when you have a lot of properties in your components, then you definitely want to do this. So this is a way to make it look nice. And as we said, we simply pass this property down to this component called example component. So if I look at my render function again, I refresh with command R, you'll see that example component props has two properties now, okay? So if I want to take a product, for example, I can take uh, what I can do next, here it will be declaring a variable, for example, product name, product name, which will be equal to props, props dot products, square bracket zero dot name, props dot products, square bracket zero dot name, props dot products, square bracket zero dot name, will be the product name. And then I guess I can just console.log it. So I'm just going to copy that line right there and uh, replace the variable name, whoops, with props, from props. And then let's see what we get. We got the name, which is the name of the product. It's a very, very annoying name. Let's replace that with uh, my secret product equals Super Mario. Super. Let's call it Super Maru, so we, do, we don't get copyright striked. <laughs> we found a way to avoid copyright strikes. So, as you can see, we're getting this property and we're, we're getting it to show. So, the next thing we can do is we can actually get it to show here. So, I can replace in line 27, I can replace all the text, I can type in title, and then I can put in option shift to the curly braces, and just type my curly braces, and then type product name, the name of the variable. And as I said, when you put curly braces, it gets evaluated. So as you'll see, you're not going to get the text product name, you're going to get the value that we have, which is Super Maru. So you'll see that the title of my secret product is equal to Super Maru. Okay? So if I go back here and change my secret product and just leave Super Maru, and refresh, now this is what you're going to see, okay? I know it's a lot, if uh, you're feeling like um, it's not enough, then I urge you to do a, a couple of uh, exercises yourself, or passing, function, uh, passing properties. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you having to study the entire JavaScript library before jumping into React. You just have to suffer for 20 minutes, just do a couple examples and then you'll be good. It's really, for me, people that want to go from the start and learn everything, 
I literally don't understand it at all because I had to do it and I wish I, I was I wish I had react seven years ago it probably was available but uh, I wish I'd known and I wish I'd went for it instead of learning JavaScript jQuery PHP WordPress and all this stuff that basically is a waste of time in my opinion it's a complete waste of time because it's not as effective and I wish I'd know it before just like I wish I'd know before of Strapi that's why I'm so passionate about it so at this point, we have a, a file that is started to get a little messy. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the uh, files so that uh, uh, our code is a little cleaner. Another beautiful thing that comes with the territory when you're working with React is the idea of separating components in separate files. And that's very useful because it will force you not to write files that have thousands of lines of code. Even the messiest React code that I've seen in my experience doesn't reach a thousand lines, while most messy code in uh, other languages, <coughs> PHP, <coughs> uh, surpasses a thousand lines all the time because uh, it's just, I guess it just doesn't force you to think in that way. And I have nothing against PHP. There's awesome frameworks such as Laravel for PHP. So if you're working with PHP props, man, you know, you're a survivor. But now, Let's just uh, let's just get effective. Let's just uh, let me show you what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder. This is a convention. The folder is gonna be called components uh, because uh, that way you organize your asset in the right way from the start. And we're gonna create a new file called. Uh, let me think it over for a second because uh, we're gonna be building the stock events table. So let's just call it the um, stock events table. So stock events table. JS. So the name is going to be capitalized and it's going to have its first letter uppercase. That's because it represents a component. A component is a function that is a little special, so that's why we use uppercase. And uh, the first thing we're going to do in this file is we're going to import React because we need it. So import React from React, which simply means load the React library from React. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go to app.js, I'm going to cut out line 22 to line 29, literally the function we wrote, I'm just gonna cut it out with command X, and I'm gonna paste it in here. Then I'm gonna go at the bottom of this file, as you can see there's a keyword export default app, and I'm just gonna copy that, and I'm gonna paste it uh, below my function definition, and then I'm gonna copy the name of the function, which is example component, and I'm gonna paste it in. And basically we created our new component. And a component is literally just a function, that returns something that is similar to HTML with a little bit of superpowers, with a little bit of JavaScript. So the one change we're gonna do, simply by following a convention, because this code will compile and will work, but just to follow a convention, we're gonna rename the function to the name of the file, so it's gonna be stock events table, and then I'm gonna also replace it down here to the same thing. So what we did is we got React in the, in the game, we define the function that basically is HTML with superpowers and that we export it. That's all we did. Um, and we basically, we did the same thing that we had here, we just moved it around, okay? So the next thing we have to do is we're gonna rename this file to stock events table. And as you'll see, this will not work. This will not compile because stock events table is not defined. This function here, that we define in this file, this file app.js has no idea where stocks event table is. So what we have to do is we have to define it. And the way we define it is by importing it. So we go at the top of the file on line three, we're gonna type in import, then the name of the thing we wanna import, which is stock events table, and then from, and we're gonna define from relative to this file. Uh, and the way you, exp uh, you wait, the way you use the current working directories with dot slash, so that means from here, go to the components folder slash, right, components, and then go in the file called stock events table. We could type .js, but since this is a JavaScript file, it's already implied that we're working with JavaScript, so we don't have to, and we can just save, and now we can see that it compiles. So we basically were able to move our function from one file to the next. Right. Basically, we laid out our groundwork. 
we're gonna have to I'm gonna have to teach a couple more things when we get to class components and uh, doing uh, fetch requests but that's basically about it for bases at this point we're ready to really leverage the power of react as we said we have one fetch product let's create a few more uh, fetch stock events so I'm gonna add a few more I'm gonna add uh, uh, one remove for 20 and another remove for 10 it's always for the product one and I'm gonna set the ID to two and three and uh, that's about it so if I go to Google Chrome uh, you can see that now I have one product and three stock events okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change here the text to be just a header so that we have h1 and h1 is not a component so it's lowercase and we're gonna just say uh, the stock up, <laughs> the stock up is kind of funny, the stock up, and it needs to be written in Helvetica, obviously, because um, it's stock, it's default, so it has to be, so I'm going to type in my Apto CSS uh, font family Helvetica, because I love Helvetica, sans serif, boom, um, you know, you guys on the Windows are missing out, but that's okay, we still love you, so, now we have our stock events table and uh, we receive our props, right? But what props are we actually interested in? We're interested in the stock events. So let's get those. We're going to delete all of these console.log statements. I'm just going to type here a container div that contains the entire uh, uh, class, the entire, the entire return statement. And we're going to have a class name of uh, the name of the component. And that's a convention I use. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically as <coughs> max or BEM is the idea that if I have an inner file or an inner uh, component or I guess an inner element inside of my component an inner element I'm gonna use this convention such as a stock event table dot paragraph it's just uh, my convention it doesn't have to be yours I find it extremely useful and uh, that's why I use it and um, that's me there's a million other ways to use uh, uh, React, but for uh, especially styles, because some people can use uh, styled elements. You can just inject Java, inject CSS, or you can do what we're going to be doing, which is just use one file and use these simple classes. Uh, there's many ways to extend this. I feel like it's out of scope, so I, I mention it, but let's just keep going. So at this point, we know we're going to get our uh, stock events, right? So let's just do something very simple. We're going to declare stock events here with const stock events. This is where the tutorial jumps in difficulty, by the way. Equals props dot, uh, it's simply equal to props. So const stock event equals props. That's because we know we're receiving a prop called stock events. So basically, we're receiving this. And instead of declaring it, we just use the curly braces uh, to use a shortcut called object destructuring. So Effectively, this is the same thing as saying stock events equals props dot stock events. So there's, that's what it is. And then in here, we're going to use JavaScript. We're going to use JavaScript and we're going to do my favorite thing ever. If you understand this, you're going to be an amazing React developer. If you don't understand this, you're going to have to struggle until you do. Uh, what are we going to do? We're just going to use an array because stock events is an array and we're going to map over it. And what happens with React is that React is able to actually render arrays. So if I do this, what you'll see is that React is able to turn it into a string with one, two, three. Okay? But if I put paragraphs here, which is funny, funnily enough, if I put an array of basically HTML, you'll see that React is actually able to render it as well. Okay? As you can see, it literally renders it. This is the beauty of React because now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do we're gonna call the map function so stock events the map which means that we're gonna do something and return an element into an, a new array based on the current elements so we're gonna have an event and we're gonna call a arrow function uh, that automatically returns uh, which means that we use round parentheses instead of curly braces so that means that whatever we write here on line 8 will be returned and for now, I'm just going to return a paragraph that says, I am executed once per event. Okay? So that you can see that effectively, since we have here on app.js, we have three fetch stock events, 
then uh, this gets executed twi uh, three times because the, there's three events. So if I want to take one of the properties such as the, uh, let's say the quantity, so I want to take the quantity event, quantity, so maybe I can do something like quantity, which will be uh, just a string, and then I can evaluate the other part, event.qdy, okay? And that way we're going to see that these events have these quantities, okay? Then, um, yeah, I'm actually going to remove the type. Let's remove the type and just use quantity as positive as a negative so that we don't have to do that extra layer of math. It's just faster. Uh, you probably want to have a type uh, if you're building a production uh, version. Actually, I'll change my mind. We'll, we'll use both. And we're going to set the quantities to negative so that uh, the math is simple, but we still have a type which uh, uh, helps us with filtering stuff. So we definitely want to have that uh, because that way we can do uh, requests to Strapi, okay? So our fetch stock events, each of our stock event has an ID, a type, a quantity, and then a product, okay? So now, quantity, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna create a div that wraps the entire return statement. The reason why is because React always wants to have a, um, a biggest parent, one single parent that returns everything. It's just a convention that React needs. So we have a quantity, we will have an ID, event.id, and the last thing we need is, uh, no, no, we also need a type, event.type, and then the last thing we're going to need is the product. So it's going to be, uh, we're just going to use product name, so it's going to be event.product.name. Let's see if the product is as a name. Yes, it does. So it, let's go what, what's it gonna be. And uh, uh, let's uh, uh, refresh and see that we get our event, okay? And we get one per, uh, per type. So now we're gonna just uh, add some styling here to make it look a little bit, dip, bit better. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding a class to this div that we return. So we're gonna type class name equals stock events table underscore underscore card so that we have the single card, card, and then let's go in up to CSS and add a uh, margin of 12 pixels and a border of two pixels solid, hashtag E. So we have something and then maybe a padding uh, of 24 pixels. And because we are uh, hipsters, we're also gonna have a border radius of three pixels because it always looks nice. Okay, so now, as you can see, we get cards out of it. Uh, let's do margin 12 pixels zero so that it's aligned, so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so as you can see, for any event that we have, we do stuff, okay? So the next thing we gotta do uh, is we should be uh, calculating the total for a specific product. As of now, we can display the stock events, but we cannot group them by product type, and we also want to show total. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to group them by a product, and that's going to be fairly rapid for us to do. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to create a second product, and just for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm going to remove the thumbnail, because otherwise it's going to make our code messy. So I'm just going to remove the thumbnail, I'm going to put a comma here, I'm going to duplicate this line, I'm going to paste it in the line below, and we're going to have an ID of two, and the second product will clearly be Luigi's Manzoon. Mansoon? Luigi's Monsoon, clearly, the story of a brave surfer. And uh, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of stock events attached to that product. So I'm just going to copy a couple of these lines. And uh, uh, I'm going to add a type of add with an ID of 4. And the second element is going to have an ID of 5. And uh, the element 4 with type add is also going to add 120. While the type 5 will lose, let's say, minus 45. And I'm going to change the fetch products from 0 to 1. So these top 3 are the events for Super Maru. And these two are for Widges Monsoon. So as you can see, they automatically get uh, built, but now we want to separate it. We want to filter them by type. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to have to iterate over all the products. 
So this is how the code was left, const curly versus stock events equal props. We have a second property that we're passing, which is called products. So we're going to use that because we need to props.map. So we're basically going to uh, products.map, iterate over all the products, then find the stock events that we want, and then output them. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to get the products by adding products here, which means that we are destructuring products and stock events. Then we're going to do curly braces products dot map so that we're working with each product one at a time and I'm pretty sure we're gonna need a body so that's why I'm putting curly braces because the first thing we're gonna need to do is filter out the stock events that we care about so the first thing we're gonna do is const curly braces ID equals product which means that we're getting the product ID from product and then we're gonna need to find for each stock event the um, the stock events that have the product that has the same ID as the current one so that we can only get the, the stock events that we care about so const uh, uh, relevant stock events is going to be equal to stock events dot uh, filter stock event so I guess SE and we're gonna get the SE dot product dot ID that is triple equal to product dot ID only those that have the same idea as the product we're going to get and then what we're going to do is we're going to return and this is going to feel a little complicated but we're going to return a div class name equals to stock event table underscore underscore products because uh, products container because it's basically the product container then we're going to show the name of the product for each product so here we're going to show the product name h2 product boom curly braces product dot name and then in here we're gonna uh, map over all of the relevant stock events just like we did here and we're gonna show them so we're basically gonna take this code right here we're gonna command exit we're gonna paste it here and we're gonna replace stock events with relevant stock events okay so now we're only iterating over the relevant stock events and they're gonna be separated by the product type so let's see what we get as you can see we got product super maru and then we got product widgets monsoon okay so the next thing we gotta do is we gotta calculate the uh, uh, quantities that we currently have available in order to calculate the quantities available we're gonna have to get all of the stock events that are relevant and we're gonna have to sum them up so we're gonna use a function which is called reduce so you're gonna see it in use very shortly we're gonna create a new variable here on line 13 and we're gonna call it const stock total is gonna be equal to relevant stock events because we already filtered them dot reduce and the function reduce ch takes two parameters uh, takes actually a, param uh, a parameter of a function which receives two parameters so the first parameter of the function will be the current value or rather the accumulator and the second parameter will be the current element. So I'm going to type in accumulator, comma, current element. And then um, I'm, I'm, we're going to use curly braces, even though we don't necessarily need to. And uh, uh, the entire function reduce will also take a second parameter, which is the initial value of the accumulator. So that we set the initial value to zero so that we start from zero, we start adding it up. Okay? So what we're going to return here is simply accumulator plus current element. And in case you feel a little, because uh, we used filter, map, and reduce, we used all of them. We also, uh, we may use the for each or we use the for each in the course. In case you're a little confused by this, I have a YouTube video that uh, spends a little bit more time in explaining this and shows examples and it clarifies them. I urge you to watch it. If you're taking my Udemy course, the link to the video will be in the next uh, uh, article so that you have that video for your reference but what all we're doing here is basically we're doing a for loop right we're doing a for loop in which we iterate in uh, basically events uh, in uh, stock uh, relevant stock events and then we simply add up a let accumulator equals zero and then we do relevant events uh, or rather this is, would be event the singular event and we will do accumulator plus equals event dot total. That's basically what we're doing for uh, event dot qdy, if I'm not mistaken. 
which we have to do up here as well. So that's all it is, but it, uh, it's a little cleaner with the dot reduce uh, because we're using second, uh, uh, or I guess higher order functions, which is cool. So we're, uh, we're returning accumulator plus current element of QDY. We have the stock total, and now we can show the stock total up here. So I'm gonna go on line 19, I'm gonna put a pipe and then a space, and I'm gonna type total, and then I'm gonna type curly braces stock total. Okay, let's see what we get. Let's refresh, and boom, we get 70, which is 100 minus 30, which is 70, and then we get uh, 75, which is 120 minus 35, okay? If you um, would like to have all the quantities to be positive and have a type, then you will just check the type in here, and then you will either return a plus or a minus. I feel like uh, having the type is useful for filtering, but uh, uh, you can have negative quantities. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. So at this point, we're showing the products, we're showing the quantities, and uh, we're showing all of the events, uh, which is pretty neat. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna introduce class components so that when you click on this product, you'll actually be, will be seeing the contents inside, but when, uh, and you'll be able to toggle whether you wanna see just the total or whether you actually wanna see all of the stock events that make up the total. Our next goal is to allow to uh, group these transactions so that uh, a potential uh, uh, entrepreneur or somebody that is doing managing the stock, they can just see the product name and the total, and only if they care, then they can open and go deeper and find all of the transactions. This is very useful because, as you can imagine, as soon as you're going to have a few hundred transactions, your brain is just going to melt while looking at the name and the total is something very manageable. And then when you need to check why you have that specific total, you may want to look into the events. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, the way we're gonna do that is by leveraging a uh, component composition, the usage of components. So if you look at um, a line 20 here, we're seeing that uh, we are mapping over all of the events and given the events, we're printing them out. Um, and then we have our products here. So what we could do is we could create a new component that is basically uh, toggleable. It's the toggleable stock events that given a specific product, it will output, uh, it will be, uh, it will show all of the stock events if it's open and it will show only the product name and the total if it's closed. So an ideal interface would be something like uh, stock detail which has a uh, name, a total, and then a stock events, okay? Stock events. So that's how uh, we're gonna go about doing this. We're just gonna be passing these properties into this, um, we're gonna passing these values into the property. So name is gonna be equal to product name. Total is gonna be equal to stock total. And then stock events is gonna be equal to relevant stock events. So since this uh, is a little uh, too much for one line, we're gonna put each property on a new line and tab it in so that you can clearly see that it's the property of this uh, component that we're gonna be working in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out this old part, this entire part. I'm gonna create a new file called stockdetail.js. I'm gonna uh, import React from React, and then I'm gonna type in function stock detail, boom, and then I'm gonna uh, export default stock detail, and then I'm gonna return whatever I pasted, which is the, um, the this content, and notice that uh, uh, we need to group this up by having a div here, otherwise React will complain because React always wants to have only one parent uh, component that returns everything else. So a parent div that groups the entire return statement is needed. And I'm gonna have a div of class name stock detail because that's my convention. It doesn't have to be yours, but that's fine. And uh, uh, we're gonna show here the uh, product name, which is gonna be called name and the total called total. Name and total. So the last thing we have to do here, because uh, first of all, this will not compile because the variable is not defined. We need to import it in stock events table. So I'm gonna import this uh, stock detail from dot slash stock detail 
and uh, it still won't, break, won't work because I expect the use of name because we are using various variables that are undefined. That's because we need to pass the props here. So by passing props and then uh, the structuring props, so const curly braces name, comma total, comma relevant stock events, which is actually called stock events, equals props. Uh, we can then refactor this variable to thing called stock events, and it will then compile properly. And as you can see, nothing has changed. It basically looks the same. It does the same thing. Okay. So the next change is that we need to be able to set whether we're going to see the stock events or not based on whether a variable is being toggled. Uh, thinking over it, uh, uh, writing this with hooks may actually be the simpler way. However, uh, I, I would say the, the teaching community believes that teaching class components is easier than teaching hooks. Um, I'm starting to disagree with it, but as of now, uh, I haven't thought it through well enough. So I'm just going to teach you how to build a class component. We're going to build a class component with one piece of state that we're going to change. And based on whether the state is set to showing these stock events, we're going to show them. And if the state is, show, is set to not show them, we're not going to show them. And that's all we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to refactor this uh, file, this stock detail, from a functional component to a class component. And then we're going to work with state. OK, first thing, we're going to refactor stock detail to a class uh, component. This is something I've introduced before, but we're going to introduce it again. The first thing in order to, uh, so what is a class component? It's just a class that has a method called render uh, that uh, uh, basically is the same as this function. So if this function is a functional component, because it's a function that returns some HTML with uh, superpowers, with JavaScript, then a class component is simply a class, which means basically a struct, just an object, uh, that has a method called render, which basically is this function. So as you'll see, it's actually very straightforward. We're just going to do the following. We're going to type class stock detail, which is the, the same name of the function. And we're going to say that it extends react.component, which is basically the component class, the base class. Then we're going to have a method called render down here. And uh, I'm just going to literally copy from the inside of this function. So I'm going to separate it to show you. This is the this is the function body, it's basically one line, and then you have the function return statement. And I'm going to copy all of it by pressing, actually cut it out by pressing command X, and I'm going to go inside the render method, and I'm just going to paste it in. Okay, and now I'm going to delete the function, and what you'll see is that by having the same name up here and down here, and the saving, we see that it actually fails to compile. It fails to compile because props is not defined, because props, which used to be passed here as the uh, parameter of the function uh, is no longer passed right there. It's actually passed as a as a key of this class. And since this is a class, we can use the keyword this to refer to a property that belongs to it. So by typing this.props, we can access the props that we use to receive as a parameter. And that's literally the only change. We're now back to where we were. We're now going to be working with state and the onclick handler. And as you'll notice, this will save you incredible amounts of time when compared to vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. So the first thing I'm going to type here is state equals curly braces uh, show false. OK, I'm going to set it to false. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to do it and then I'll, I'll um, explain it to you a little bit better later. But let's just get it done. I'm going to declare show in the render method as uh, coming from this.state because just like you can get stuff from this.props, you can get stuff from this.state and we're getting this show variable. And now the, the other thing that may be a little esoteric but uh, it's basically superpowers in JavaScript is that I'm going to type state and end, well, it's actually show, excuse me, show, the variable show and end, which means if show is true, then do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this thing right here. We're going to do this code. Now, I had to wrap this around what is called the React fragment, which is basically an empty code. Uh, but I'll actually change it to a div. It doesn't matter. Uh, for now, we're just going to use a div just to avoid opening too many threads. But all I did is I created this Boolean check. If the variable show is set to true, then show me this stuff. Otherwise, don't. So what we'll see is that we no longer see the content. OK? So if I go back and I go up here and I set show to true, you'll see that every one of them will actually show the contents. 
So as you can see, the value of this variable right here determines what happens to this content. Now, what we can do is we, create, we can create a function called onClick and we can attach it to a bunch of elements. An element that will be good to attach it to is this div right here. So we can create a, a function called onClick and I'm just going to type an arrow function that will just console.log uh, the name of the component which is stock detail dot render and then clicked because that's that's basically dot on click that's basically where this is happening and uh, after writing this on click open parenthesis space equal greater than console.log and then the string I'll, I'll run it by clicking and uh, command k to clear the console and clicking anywhere on the div will trigger this on click okay so what we can do next is we can um, make it do something more relevant. But as you can see, this is as simple as it gets to bind an on-click event to a component. It's literally, just, it's literally that simple. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set state by typing this dot set state, which is the way we set the state, because if we were to change this state variable without using this function, React wouldn't know. So we have to use this function to do it. And we're going to set show equals to not show. So show, which we get here in line 10, uh, we, we, we get the boolean opposite, the boolean uh, uh, not, the, the not of it, and then we set it to our current state, which means that we toggle it. We're basically toggling the state. So if our state is initially set to false, because I think it makes more sense, then if we click, we will actually be able to see it. And if we click anywhere, it will hide. Now, for the... Um, I feel like this is uh, as far as we have to take this. As you can see, we now show you the products, and then we show you these elements. Uh, a, further, a further way to improve on this will be to wrap this around a div that has a maximum height, and then you, based on the elements, you're allowed to scroll, so that uh, uh, otherwise, if you open uh, like 300 events, you, you will basically be overwhelmed. But as you can see, what do we actually do? We set a variable called state to this component, and we can access any property to, of a class, of a component of a class, by using this, so we get this dot state. So if we had a function called uh, show me equals uh, console.log, yo, we could uh, we could call it by saying const show equal or const uh, uh, call me equal this dot show me, and then we can do console.log render call me <laughs> call me. Yeah, we're going to console the log, of course, maybe, because that's uh, what's up. So now you can see that any key of your class can be accessed, uh, as you can see, any key of your class can be accessed by, can be accessed by uh, using the keyword this. Um, so what did we do? We got the state, we get the variable show, we use this nice trick of uh, Boolean evaluation so that it checks whether show is true or false, and if it's false, it's closed. And if it's true, it's actually opened. And then we have an on-click event that is tied to the entire container, stock details, so the entire container. And if you click on it, it will toggle that value to positive or, or negative, to true or false. And by toggling it, uh, we allow, to, again, to uh, reduce information overload for our users, which I think is pretty cool. So this uh, uh, concludes uh, the stock details. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is actually connect this to Strapi. In order for us to connect our front end to Strapi, we first need to set up our back end. I assume you already installed it. If you didn't, you can type in npx create strapi app and inventory backend and then select the quick start. In my course, I show you how to go from quick start to a fully deployed version. So quick start is actually perfect for development and it transitions smoothly and perfectly into uh, production environment. I love it. So we're going to just go in the back end. I assume you created your user and we're going to create our content type. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go back to app.js and as you remember we have products and we have stock events. So those are the two type of data that we're going to create. Let's go back to our Strapi, click on content type builder, create, click on create new content type, call the first one product singular because a product will then have an endpoint of products, and that's built automatically by Strapi. And then it's going to have a name. And I think we're going to leave it like that for now. So the, a product is simply going to have a name. 
And then the next thing we're going to create is the stock events. So we, we wait for it to refresh. We click again, or click new content tab. This one we're going to call stock event. And uh, we cannot uh, uppercase it. Um, I guess we can, but uh, let's just keep it like, um, like this to avoid any issue. Because back in the day, you used to have issues with uh, that kind of capitalization. I think it's been solved, but uh, we can use stock events like that for now. And uh, uh, what we're going to have is a type, a quantity, and a product. So the type is going to be an enumeration. So let's click on enumeration. I have a type, and each type will be on one line. So the first one will be add, and the second one will be remove. And these are strings, so that's assumed. And if you press enter, uh, if you press add another field, we're going to add another field, which is going to be the quantity, which is going to be a number. And I, I like to use QTY, but you may choose to do anything. And for format, you can just use integer. It doesn't matter. And uh, uh, the last thing will be the product. So we're going to create an, a relation. We we'll click on relation. And it's going to be a one-to-many relation with product. So I'm going to click on products on the right. And I'm going to set it to this one. You're going to have many stock events and only one product. So a stock event will store only one product, but a product can have many stock events. So now I press on finish, I press on save, and we're going to get ready in a second. I'm just going to pre-populate the data by creating a, a, a couple of products. So the first one will be called uh, uh, Maru's World, very famous. And the second one will be uh, Satoru Rules, because we love him. And uh, we're going to save. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on stock events, and we're going to create a couple of stock events. So the first product will be Maru's World. And we have an add, and we're going to add uh, 150. And then we're going to create another stock event for removal for Maru's world. And we're going to remove 24. And then I'm just going to add uh, 99 red balloons to Satoru's rules. And that way we have a couple of stock events. We have a few of them. Now, how do we work with this? Well. If you watch my course, you know that we can just interact. We're going to test up our endpoints by using Postman, just like we did in the course. So we know for a fact that our one endpoint is going to be called slash products. The other one is going to be called dash stock events. And it's going to be a get request. I'm going to type HTTP column slash slash localhost column 1337 slash admin, excuse me, slash uh, stock events. And I'll press send. And as you can see, we get a forbidden code. That's because I forgot to set the roles and permissions. So I'm going to go to Google Chrome. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do a public in here. You will do an authenticator request. But we're, let's just set it to public just to push this forward. So let's set uh, stock events uh, and products, both, both find and find one, to be in public. You probably would uh, um, let, uh, uh, you will let the products be public in a, in a co consumer-facing example. You would have products be public. You would have stock, stock events being definitely private. And then you probably would create a custom endpoints on products that calculates the total for each product given a stock event. Uh, we may do that later. I feel like it will be very um, educational as well. So at this point, we have public data here. Everything is public, so I can test it out. And as you can see, I get a bunch of stuff. Okay. And so my next step will be to just get these stock events um, and to get the uh, products. So let's do the other request, slash products, to get them. Uh, and as you can see, there's redundancy in the data, which I actually love. It saves a lot of time uh, with um, how Strapi works. But uh, we're going to have to get this data through our React application, which is what we're going to do next. The way we're going to get our data is by using Axios. The reason why we're going to use Axios is because, in my experience, it's a better user experience than using Fetch. Fetch is an API that is available uh, even in the browser. So we could literally just do Fetch uh, and then copy this URL because it requires no authentication. And then do a dot .then res and then res.json. And uh, if you feel uh, a little annoyed by the Syntax, uh, I agree. I don't like it at all. But it is what it is. I guess this would be JSON. Although I'm not sure if we can type that. We'll, we'll see. Boom. Uh, we're not supposed to log it as a string. We're supposed to do something like res. Boom. And as you can see, we get our data. So this is as simple as it has to be by using fetch. 
uh, but we're actually going to use Axios because uh, if you were to use the authentication, it gets much easier with Axios. It gets a little more consistent. I personally prefer it over Fetch. If you prefer Fetch, you're free to use that. Anyway, uh, more information of Axios are here, NPM Axios. And I'll make sure to leave that at the end of this uh, section of the course. So feel free to reference this. Uh, but I'll basically show you everything you need to know. And uh, starting from going in the root folder of the React application and tapping npm i Axios to install Axios. Let's let it run. In the meantime, we're going to go to the app.js. And we're going to have to refactor this application uh, this, this component from a functional component to a class component because we want to make this request in a specific moment, which is the moment in which this component is first loaded. And I'm going to get that in a second, but first let's just refactor it. So we're going to type in class app extends react.component, curly braces, and then we're going to have a render. And just like before, we're going to cut out the function body with command x, and we're going to paste it inside the render method. And then I can delete the function. And as you'll see, uh, the application, if I type npm start after installing Axios, the application will still compile. Uh, nothing has gone wrong. Uh, we basically made a very minor refactoring to our application. Okay? Okay. Let's uh, give it a second to load. Okay. So next up, we're going to import Axios. And uh, typically, you import uh, your uh, static references up. So let's import Axios from Axios. And uh, uh, we can't use it though, because uh, uh, we don't have a way to trigger, uh, let's call it the right time for us to get Axios. So imagine that these variables, fetch products and fetch stock events, were in our state. So we're going to declare state equals curly braces. And then we can literally just type fetch products, comma, fetch stock events. And since the, the name of the key is equal to the value of this variable, uh, this will work. And then we can make a change here on line 43 to use this.state.fetchProducts and this.state.fetchStockEvents. And as you can see, uh, it will still work. Nothing has changed. The map is still there. And uh, just to uh, simplify our code here, we're going to refactor the this.state blah, blah, blah to uh, a object destructuring here. So we're going to do const curly braces, fetch products, comma space, fetch stock event is equal to this dot state. And then I can remove this dot state here. So it's a little cleaner. Boom. And uh, the code is still good, still works, still run. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually change the fetch products and fetch stock event by making a asynchronous request. The way this will work is we're going to use a component lifecycle method. Now, render is technically also a component lifecycle method because it happens every time you need to re-render. But another component lifecycle method that is very useful in React is called component did mount. And component did mount is a, a, a second. Component in mount is a lifecycle method that gets called the first time the component renders. So console.log, or actually before it renders, to be fair, app.componentDidMount. So now we have a console.log, and then let's type in console.log render, or app.render. And what we'll see if we open the console with command option I is uh, uh, the order of operation. As you can see, you get the first render, and then you get component did mount. As you can see, you get the first render and then you get the component did mount. Uh, so that, that's a very consistent pattern, which means that this method um, will be triggered uh, only uh, when the component mounts. But you'll see that if we do something to our state instead of component did mount, the app will re-render. So if we do this dot set, let's say I have an additional key of uh, random, actually answer, because obviously we need to have a, our memes per quota is going to be zero, and then I set state to answer being equal to 42. What you'll see is that our state goes from render, and then it calls component did mount, and then it renders again. The reason why it renders again is because our state has changed, and, and whenever React detects a change in our state, it will trigger a new re-render. So 
this is the perfect, this, this component amount that gets only called once is the perfect place in which we can do asynchronous calls. Uh, since we're going to do an asynchronous operation, I'm going to use the keyword async so that we can avoid using the dot then, which you see, so a quick example when using the fetch in the browser, but I would recommend just sticking with uh, async await, it's simpler. And uh, we already know that we're going to be setting these two variables. So let's just uh, type them in here. We already know that. And then on line 40, I'm going to do a await. Actually, I'm going to declare const res or const product res. So the response that we're going to get for our products is going to be equal to await. I'm going to use axios. And the way I'm going to use it is I'm going to feed it an object. And this object will have two parameters. The first parameter will be the method which is get, it mirrors how we do it in Postman, get, and then the second parameter will be the URL, and the URL, we can just copy it straight from here, and uh, this is the product for us, so I'm going to copy the, the URL for products. Okay, and then we can do the same request for, uh, or rather a similar request for our stock events. So I'll actually type it again just to reiterate the point, so const stock events res is going to be equal to await, so we're going to await what Axios is going to do, Axios, with a method of get, why? Because again, this is the method get, and a URL of localhost 157 slash stock events. Boom. And now, the only thing we got to do is we got to set these variables to be to something uh, real, uh, that we can use. And I'll tell you that uh, the response that we get from Axios it has more information than the information we want, than the data we care about. In order for us to get the data, we just call this, this variable product res dot data. So what I'm going to declare is const fetched products is going to be equal to product res dot data. And the same thing I'm going to do for stock event res. So it's const fetched stock events is going to be equal to stock events res dot data. Okay, if you're not sure how the data looks, you can just type in a console.log and the way you will do that will be app.componentDidMount and then a space, then the name of the variable such as stock event res, comma stock event res. Okay, so that way we can also debug and I can show you what the data looks like. And what you'll see is that our data will change. So the second the application loads, you'll see that you have the mock data. And then the second the request goes, as you can see, it flashes very rapidly, you immediately get your new updated data from our API. And the beauty of this is that if I change the stock events and add a new stock event, tomorrow's world, to be a add of 999, and you save, and I uh, make a refresh here, you'll see that immediately this is updated. And that's the beauty of working with a headless CMS and a React application, that we built this in a very little time and we were able to showcase the strength of this. I just want to wrap up uh, this entire uh, quick tutorial. I believe that you've seen the power, you, you finally saw the power of Strapi and we just scratched the surface. A couple of things we haven't done was file upload and authentication, which I believe are uh, very important stuff that we will definitely cover in another time. but. Let's actually try and figure out how to use this in a practical way. Like, what we built here is the stock explorer, right? It's something that uh, can be used for uh, seeing what the stock is at, but there's no um, events that change it. So how will we go about using this in the real world? In my opinion, we will simply be using the administration panel to move the stuff. So what you can do is you can click up here and click on manage the administrator. So basically you click on your username and then manage the administrator and you will then allow other people to join and they will be able to also manage the stock. So that way you have rapidly, in the probably the shortest time possible, you build your own stock management application. I honestly don't think you can build this any faster. I mean, I guess if I weren't explaining to you, I could but uh, uh, you definitely can see the power of using a tool such as Strapi that also contains the administra administration panel and the power of using a framework such as React that empowers you again to build this stuff like this. And the beauty of it is that you can take what we call the uh, microservices oriented approach in which every single feature or every single functionality you can build with a separate Strapi installation, a separate React app 
and then you can compose your business service or your business in itself through various services. This means that you don't have to look at your big app as one monolith that you have to work on uh, all by itself, but you can look at it as these various pieces that go all together. And uh, um, this way you can, you, know, you can focus on one at a time and you can also get them done fairly rapidly. Now going forward, there are, there's a bunch of stuff that can be done to improve this application, such as creating the stock events, creating the products, uh, I'll probably do a separate video on that and most likely also hiding everything behind authentication and uh, since we have to do it we also will be doing file upload so most likely there's going to be a separate uh, video that explains the creation create read update delete of products and then the create read update delete of events and then we will have a, a file upload and authentication done separately so if you're interested in this Definitely subscribe if I put this as a free video. Otherwise, if this is part of the course, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to, to, to keep updated because this stuff is going to keep coming up. I'm, I'm probably going to make at least a video a week. So definitely check it in because this course is just getting started. Thank you.